Hello, everyone. My name is Masashi Yemizuyama, CTO of automotive company, Panasonic Corporation. Today, I would like to talk about device virtualization architecture for automotive systems. First, I would like to update briefly on Vert.io, which I presented and proposed at the last all members meeting in Monte Carlo. This page is from my last presentation and shows current pain point around virtualization in automotive. Per virtual device driver layer and even part of Azure platform layer itself depend on both hypervisor and SOCs. It's undesirable fragmentation and we, we don't have enough freedom of choice of technologies. It's unhealthy from ecosystem point of view. This slide is also from my last presentation again, and it illustrates uh, my proposal suggesting Vert.io as the standard framework for AGL device virtualization. By that, we will have a common interface and implementation for power virtualization devices. This gives us enhanced freedom to choose optimal hypervisor and SOC for our need without modifying upper layer software significantly. When we go with virtualization in AGL, I believe this is critically important. So, as per approval of AGL advisory board, Panasonic has started to serve as the new lead of the virtualization EG to reactivate and started the discussion for Vario de deployment for AGL. The EG has a quite a nice diversity of involvement, and there have been various active discussions. And the EG has reached to the consensus to work together to support VATIO in AGL. The EG also sets the first target as achieving VATIO support in AGL KK. I think this is quite remarkable progress in this short period of time from April. I'd like to express my thanks to EG members. And if you would like to promote or contribute to Vertio related development for AGL, please join virtualization EG. Next, I would like to discuss and propose furthermore on device virtualization. I showed this slide two years ago, also in the past AMM. In this, in this historical trend of general computing architecture, it has been going back and forth between centralization and distributed, driven by the fluctuation of the cost and performance of processing, memory, and communication. This means there is no constant or optimal answer. This picture shows a similar concept with the previous slide, but focusing more on co processor hardware and software on it. Also, physical architecture keeps changing, and physical system scale keeps diversified, even in the same architecture. In such variable situation, Virtualization has been constantly the key technology to preserve our most expensive asset. The virtualization technology include both CPU and device virtualization, as shown in the bottom picture. The most expensive asset is, of course, software. For that ob objective, I would like to stress that the device virtualization is critically important, possibly more than CPU virtualization. In automotive computing architecture, device virtualization is similarly important by the identical reason. From next slide, I would like to discuss on device virtualization technology, specifically in automotive. 
in automotive computing architecture, there is some specific necessities or needs for device virtualization in addition to the general ones which I mentioned in the previous slide. The first necessity is simple. Depending on car grade or car model, the equipped device can vary. For example, there are a variety of display set among car models or car grades in the same OEM. Number, size, or aspect ratio of display can be different among car models or grades. We need common abstraction for such diverse devices to preserve software asset. The second necessity is rather complex. Automotive computing architecture is currently a pretty much distributed one, consists of a lot of ECUs. In this environment, allocation policy of specific, soft, specific application softwares to specific ECU and al allocation policy of specific device to specific ECU are, are different. Optimal location of application could be decided by the cohesion of functionalities or information, or by load characteristics of application, such as vector heavy or neural network heavy, and so on. On the other hand, optimal location of devices could be decided by physical distance to ECU or by specific peripheral interface channel of ECU, and so on. So application software and relevant devices does not necessarily locate it on the same ECU. Furthermore, it varies among car model or vehicle generations. Even in such an environment, we need to preserve our software asset. So from application point of view, location transparency is another critical issue. Thus, we need device virtualization technology that specify those two necessities. But you might think the necessity could be mitigated when the centralized architecture is deployed. But I don't think it is the case because a single centralized system still consists of multiple virtual machines and as shown in the figure, logical architecture stays similar. This example depicts the general notion of device virtualization from application point of view, which I have explained so far. In this example, virtual display and virtual storage are defined. The application software can treat them as if it is with dedicated devices. Those virtual devices are physical location agnostic and highly abstracted. For instance, a part of this virtual display is mapped to a specific part of specific display connected to a specific ECU or specific virtual machine in centralized case. The mapping can be changed by some manager program. Application software is not involved to the specific detail of physical world. Application just needs to treat uh, virtual display model and the virtual display is mapped to the physical world by the device virtualization software behind the scene. Thus, application software asset is preserved among various physical configurations. This is the concept of a, a device virtualization. This is a slide I have been showing repeatedly, but please take a look at the text at the top right corner. We have been proposing Virtio not only for uh, hypervisor case, but as a common abstract interface of devices, even for platforms without hypervisor. This can be the most basic piece of device virtualization, which I explained. Like this, we propose Vertio interface as a common abstract interface for various devices. By this, 
we can maximize the commonality of Azure software among SOC and even both hypervisor and non-hypervisor environment. As I mentioned previously, virtualization EGs set the target to support Bug.io at AGL KK. Thanks to the activity, we can prepare this automatically. Another aspect of device virtualization is location transparency. By this technology, first, application can render information on arbitrary optimal device displays. Second, mixed contents can be rendered to single display from applications in different ECUs. Third, application, applications are independent from number, size, location, and or aspect ratio of displays. This slide shows the design overview of our unified virtual display to realize the concept of previous slide. Each ECU runs different type of operating system though. Each has common design for virtual display and share the unified virtual frame memory. Applications on each ECU can access to it. Thus, the distributed mixed rendering is realized. This does work not only in purely distributed system with separate ECUs, but also in semi-distributed system or centralized system with virtual machines in a single ECU. However, without realizing interoperability between ECUs, it does not work. Each ECU from different suppliers need to exchange rendering information to each other by common protocol. It can be theoretically realized either by some standardization process of standard protocol or by the open source collaborative development. My position is that the latter one is much better than the other in terms of both quality and speed. There are some existing display sharing technologies. The first one, video encoding surfaces. This requires additional codec, computational power, and uneven load balance. The second one, mandate to use specific GUI toolkit library. We do not have the freedom to choose favorite toolkit, so we are proposing the third one. It delivers OpenGLES command to remote nodes. The application can use any kind of GUI toolkit uh, with distribute GPU load. Uh, we already implemented the initial version and prototype system is working well and flexibility of HMI is amazing. We are going to share the video image of our prototype system soon. The red components in this figure are required to implement the technology. We use Varayo GPU to acquire OpenGL ES commands in application side and send them to remote nodes. A remote node preserves its commands and renders with its GPU. Also, we need to implement DWM distributed window management. By implementing those components, we can realize very flexible and interoperable integrated cockpit HMI while preserving software asset. Don't you think it is quite exciting for me 
Of course I do. So to make the display virtualization technology interoperable among the industry, we are going to discuss on the collaboration activity in SAT of AGL to progress. Active participations and feedbacks are welcome. Thank you very much.